Uh, okay, yo, yo, yo. I, I guess we're back. Yes, we are. <laughs> uh, sir, are you there? I'm hey! Hey! I'm here in full effect. <laughs> yo, what's up, Dre? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Um, did you did you did you get your ears lowered? What's going? Uh, I something different about you. <laughs> yeah, the ears. Different are... about you. I got my ears worked on. I got my ears worked on. I just been thinking about how we walk around in masks all the time, and you know, it's it's been interesting to see. When you walk down the street and people move to the side now. You know, it's actually you know it's about Rona, but it's a thing we're used to. Mm. So. I don't know who sent me this, but somebody sent me a set of masks like this. And I was like, holy cow, like, look at that. And it's, it's funny when you look at it, but walk around people like, yo, <laughs> like shock. <laughs> it, it, makes you, it makes you think about how I walk around and present myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction when you see it? Listen, I see, I see the smile. I see, I see that, you know, you know, the intensity of the smile. You know, it's almost like Steve Harvey status, you know? Mm-hmm, 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 out there, right? Yeah, it looks like you're about to host the show. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Brown Juice Barbershop. <laughs> oh, man, I need to get me some of those. I know. People have been saying that. Um, look at that. It's kind of wild. When I saw it, I was like, Dad, that's like, that's my face on a mask. Yeah, man. It's crazy. <laughs> and it's like, and it, and it, it gives you part of your identity back. Yeah, completely, right? And yeah. it also, it's weird. It also, everything is real. Everybody is very, like, soft and like, oh, hi, all of a sudden. I'm going to say, like, you don't realize I'm just, like, frowning, you mm. know? And then maybe, like, check myself and think about it. Like, what does it mean? We just come out like, ha, ha, hey, how are you? you know? <laughs> um, as opposed to walking around that New York front, you know? Mm. It's very, it's very interesting to move through the world with this thing on. No, that's interesting that you put that there, because if you really, if we really were to unpack it a little bit more, um, before Rona, we've been walking around with masks on. If you really want to unpack it. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things that some masks are more accepted than others. Hey, so you get me. That's why, that's why I knew I'd just reveal it. Yes, sir. Let's see when I pop in. Yes, sir. That's real. That's real. Yeah, it's too hot, though. I'm taking it off. <laughs> and you, hey, there you go. Hey, what's up? <laughs> same smile though, same smile. <laughs> yes, right? I, I need to get me some of those, man. I need to get I need to get one or two or something because you know, I need it. It's a part of your identity back. Get your face back, you know? It's, it's your money. Very, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. Very, very interesting to walk around. Like people like I'll be walking. And people will get like five feet past and go, yo, yo, man, that messed me up. Like, what was, what were you, I didn't, let me see the, it was, what's that? You know, I'm like, it's just a mask and I keep it moving. But it's so interesting that people are, you know, when you do things and put yourself out there certain ways, people go over the top and get friendly and approachable. And I'm very aware of how people respond to me in general in society. And walking around with this now is, um, is it because I, I wear it, I'm like, I wasn't, and when I got it, I was like, what am I going to do with these things? I mean, look, look at this thing. Look at that thing. Somebody said. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. like somebody got my face and put it on a mask. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. They even got the nose, like, completely right. Look at that. This, that's, that's just, like... <laughs> even the complexion is, like, on. It's perfect. Right? It's perfect. They can do anything. Anything. My goodness. That's perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. So, so I, I was just been thinking about what are the various masks that we wear and that we put on, mm -hmm. you know, constantly, even before Rona, mm -hmm. you know, just the mask life, mm -hmm. you know, and what, how does it, how does it really affect us to put these masks on black men walking through the earth, walking mm -hmm. through the earth, rather, walking through mm -hmm. the earth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, and it's funny because we, we're supposed to be putting these masks on for what? Survival. Exactly. So when you think exactly. about that, when you really think about that, I know my mask just growing up in New York City, raised in pre-gentrified Harlem, you know, I'm not walking around the streets, particularly places I'm not familiar with and places I don't know people, mm -hmm. smiling and everything. Exactly. That exactly. says victim. That says victim in a lot of different ways, in the yeah. sense of, you know, oh, yeah, this person we could talk to, et cetera. That's what I've been taught. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, my personality, 
um, being a little bit more stoic, being a little bit more reserved. In some cases, mm-hmm. you might say, you know, super introverted to the point where I'm aloof or whatever the case may be. I mean, that's just a piece of it. But I always have to remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, sometimes you got to lift that mask. Other times it is really about survival. Yeah. It's interesting to see, like, Black men have a real visceral response. Like, I was in a store and this guy was like, yo, like, <laughs> he was, he was like yo, 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 man, you left me up. Like, yo, yo, that's, he's up. And I was like, I, I didn't, I'm just standing here, I haven't moved. <laughs> you having this reaction, it was really amazing. That's, <laughs> and that's, then these two, what's that? That's, that's so interesting. Oh yeah, totally. Then these two cats sitting on the street were like, ah. <laughs> you know? Cause they were like, yo, why you? I mean, I think, I think it's a moment of like, why are you smiling so hard? Mm-hmm. You're a black man in the world. I think right now in this moment to walk around with that mask is really, really, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a, an art happening study thing to do. Like just, just get people reactions. It's crazy. And a lot of like, a lot of, um, it's, just, it's, just, it's just interesting to go to how various people are responding to it. So I wanted to start to share that oh, with for you. Sure, for sure. I don't know if you saw the movie The Purge, um, but when you think about The Purge, having that type of mask on, and if you happen to walk by and you hear some sirens too, I might start walking the opposite direction, brother, because I think it's about to go down and I got to go get ready. You know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Stay ready, stay woke, <laughs> stay ready, stay woke man. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, good to see you as always, bro. Good to see you too. Man. Mask or no mask, you know what I mean? Hey. And um, what you got going on over there? I had to represent my people. What's to you? Little Rock. Little Rock, Arkansas, the Little Rock Nine. Mm. My people, I go out every year, well, usually a couple times a year, and see the folks. We sit down with Elizabeth Eckbert on my civil rights tour, stop in Little Rock, Arkansas, and we sit and talk with um, her, which is amazing. She's one, of the, she's one of the original Little Rock Nine. You know the picture of a woman in the, in the shades with a pretty mm. dress and holding a book? That's her. She's like 80-something now. And we sit down with her and talk about her experience. And it's just it's phenomenal. And so I just want to honor this site and this place. Um, it's also tricky to think about it right now because it is, uh, I think it's majority of students of color right now, but all the AP classes, who do you think are in the AP classes? Not students of color. No, sadly. And it's, it's really intense to think about the fact that that is a place with such a historical moment, you know, the seat of like a national experience, international observation internationally observed space where little brown kids are trying to go to school. And do you know that they shut down the schools, the all public schools in Little Rock for one year? I didn't know that, no. They rather say, they said no kids in any schools at all versus fully fully integrating. Mm -mm -mm. Right? Mm -mm -mm. And people are surprised right now. But let let me, what you got on? (laughs) I'll I'll come back to that. Listen, brother, today I decided, I was like, because, you know, everyone's talking about, because today is the 14th. When we're recording this right now, it's the 14th, June 14th. And, you know, some may know it as Flag Day. Some may know it as another holiday. But people have been calling it the Obama Day, right? So mm-hmm. I thought about putting on an Obama shirt today. Um, but I woke up, like I usually do every morning, feeling really, really black. Mm-hmm. So I just put on a black shirt. That's nice. all. I, just, I, just, I love it. You know, I just put on a black tee, you know. And maybe, maybe it's a V-neck because I'm feeling victorious, too. You know, I got a black V-neck shirt. That's, that's what I'm rocking with today. Why victorious? Why, why you feel victorious? Victorious because I made it through another week. Um, victorious okay. because I think that as we march towards justice, hopefully, I am hopeful and remain um, steadfast in prayer that we will be victorious. Um, so I guess that's, that's why. But we can't lose sight of this potential victory. And no. that's one of the things I want to talk about today, too. Because, you know... It's a nice day outside. Folks are starting to barbecue. Folks are starting to pop some brown juice and all these other things. And it's like, don't lose sight, bro. Don't no. lose sight, sis. No, no. And there's a global epidemic mm-hmm. going on also that hasn't improved at all. Mm-hmm. Worse. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So just, we, if we want to be victorious, there's some things we need to keep in mind. So we need to lubricate this conversation. What you Talk doing? about it. <laughs> what you drinking? What you drinking? What you drinking? I'm telling you, I'm feeling back. I'm feeling real black today. Okay. I'm real black, so. Uncle Nearest. 
Yeah. Got some Uncle Nearest. Um, what is that? So this Uncle Nearest, I don't know if folks know the story, but the story is, if folks are familiar with the brand Jack Daniels, um, Jack Daniels, the way that the story goes with the folks of Uncle Nearest, is that Nearest Green, who was a, uh, uh, an enslaved person, uh, was the person who actually taught Jack Daniels how to distill whiskey. So Jack Daniels, the famous Jack Daniels that you have, was really of Nearest Green's making. Um, mm -hmm. So this was opened up in his honor. Um, and is a black owned business, black owned company. I believe the CEO was Fawn Weaver. Um, and there's a number of different batches that they have. I happen to have this one, and I got another one just, just, just for today, but I'm not gonna open both. Come on now. Come on now. There we go. You know, there we go. Got Show that right there too. So, I mean, I need, to choose, I need to find some other ones. If I get my hands on the other ones, because I know they're making some new things, but I told you, I'm, I'm feeling black, bro. I'm feeling real black today. So I got, my brown juice got to be black today. How did you, how did you score those? Where'd you get those? So fortunately where I am um, in, in Philadelphia, um, there was one store that wasn't curbside pickup, but actually opened back up um, in Jenkintown. So right outside of Philadelphia, you travel. You travel. I travel for it. Listen, this, and this is a word for folks. This is the same thing I talk to people about hiring for diversity and hiring for equity. If you want someone who's going to add to your business, your corporation, your institution, whatever the case may be, particularly if they're a person of color, you might have to travel far. You might have to work harder. You might have to spend more money, but you better do it. So got to do it. Okay. Okay. Work it out. Work it out. Work it out. Work it out. Yes, okay. sir. What All you right. got going on? Well, I was influenced by you, and I wanted to taste what you have been doing. Ooh. So I went and got the Russells. Yes, sir. You're in for a treat. I hope so. But I want some nearest now. I want some black brown juice. <laughs> <laughs> what black brown juice? Listen, listen, I had to pay you back, brother, for that hell rock. <laughs> I had dreams. I woke up in cold sweats. Hell rock. Uh, I almost brought it back being like, you know what, let's, let's just do it again. But Listen, I, I, you can do that for like a solid four or five times. I'm like, brother, I'm just here with you. I'm just have you had you. Uncle Nearest ever? I've had this one before. Okay. I haven't had the other one before, and I haven't had any other selections that they've, they've come out with. Then I think you need to open the other one. Oh, yeah. You think so? Mm -hmm. Both today? What's that? Both today, or you think open the other one first? Open the one you haven't had yet, because I haven't had this yet. Oh, let's, well, let's do it. I mean, you, but you make a choice. I'm making a suggestion. No, brother, listen, I, I am open to good suggestions. <laughs> because guess what? It doesn't mean they're not going to get drunk, you know what I mean? Later on, it's some, you know, come oh, around. Oh, goodness. Like this one. How, how, what, what does that taste like over there? I didn't taste that, but it smells good. Oh, this brother, I'm this telling you. So I told you. Like, I, I used to be on the Heaven Hill bandwagon. Right, right. Um, but backup, my backup, you know, is, is Wild Turkey. So Wild Turkey, yeah. folks, you know, yeah. All right. Ready? Here we go. Let's get into it. Mm. Oh, goodness. It's Russell's. Oh, really? Russell, Russell Reserve. Where are you at, Russell? <laughs> <laughs> 91 years, Jimmy and his son, Russell, Eddie Russell. I hope they're good people. Hope so, yeah. So this is small, this is the small batch whiskey. 1884, Uncle Nearest. Wow. Mm -hmm. Cheers, sir. Cheers, man. So you waking up feeling black. Oh. Oh, 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 Russell, oh, 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 oh. How's that? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! I taste history. I taste the ancestors. <laughs> I taste victorious. Hey, I like victorious. Look at the uncle touching you. Mm. I love it. I love oh, it. oh my, hold up. That tastes like honey. See you now. Stop. Good call, Dre. Good call. Good, good. Woo! Good. You might have lost me for this whole <laughs> conversation. <laughs> ah, man. Mm, that's good. Ah, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to write a letter. That's good. There that you is go. good. Letter. <laughs> Dear sirs. <laughs> <laughs>
Woo! My goodness. That's good. That's rocking good? Mm-hmm. 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 It has a, it's very like, it, it is, it's very flavorful. <sighs> My goodness. Jimmy and Eddie, okay now, okay now. <laughs> revenge is sweet. Okay, revenge is sweet. <laughs> He's floating in the air, like, oh man. <laughs> I'm glad I'm happy for you. I'm glad I'm happy to see you have a good experience. Oh yes. Oh yes. This listen, I'm gonna spend some time with this. I see. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I what's like going your mind and your heart after that after that sip? What you feeling like talking about, man? Um, <clears throat> well, you know, the world is on fire. <laughs> and Native Americans are ripping down Columbus statues. Mm. Everybody's ripping down these Confederate statues around the world. Mm-hmm. Everybody's ripping down these folks who benefited from um, making tons of money off of enslaving people in the trade. They're just tearing them down, throwing them in the lake. And I love it because we tried to come to them and say, hey, let's have this conversation. Let's work it out. This is problematic. It's problematic. You know, and you know, we both do this. We both spend a lot of time talking to a lot of people about these issues and supporting and facilitating and all that jazz. And it's exhausting. I had some really amazing conversations on Friday with the group that's at the beginning of this conversation, you know, and, and it was tough. It was, it, was, it was four quick sessions. So I had to like lay it in, excuse me, three quick sessions. I had to lay it in really deep for like an hour when it's like a tap. So it was a big old survey conversation about these deep issues with people who are for the first time going is systemic racism a real thing and how do I talk about it? what do I do you know um so in that in that saying all that it's a matter of what does self-care look like and feel like at this moment because there's a real level of intensity to see white people mm. like wow this is really really real can I talk to you and I'm like <coughs> It was real four weeks ago, sure, you know, but before you do that, um, why don't you Google some stuff and read some stuff and check some stuff out. And it's been tough because I haven't been available for a lot of my people because I just, I need to stop and take care of myself. And I'm mm. on it all. I've been like, going to 11 p.m. Mm. You know? I had to fight. I did work some, did some work today, but I had to fight to really not do work. You know what I've been doing? What you I'm mean? Doing the kid on the couch watching Harry Potter. Okay. I cut it all off. Okay. You know? mm-hmm. And even then, I was like, where do people call that? You know? <laughs> critical eye, critical eye. Oh, critical eye. Critical eye. So, yeah, so my, thought, my thoughts on that in terms of, in this intense moment where our work is crucial and necessary and needed, and we're being pulled in so many directions to get stuff, and we have to witness people who are, basically at the beginning of this conversation when it comes to looking at and acknowledging that systemic racism is real and deep and has intense effects on our society. How do you step back and take care of Mikhail and still show up for this work that is your, your ministry, I would mm. even as far as to say? Mm. That's a good question. Um, I would say, you know, it is frustrating when you feel like the world or at least the white world uh, generally speaking, is just now waking up to systemic racism. It's almost as if they've been sleeping for the longest time and all of a sudden they wake up to this aroma of coffee flavored racism. Um, and it's like, okay, is that, is that coffee? Is that racism? Oh, oh, wow. Wow. And it's like they're just waking up to that aroma and that smell. And the, and the question is why? Why are you just now waking up to it? And you know, I've always asked this question about if these other things weren't happening in the backdrop, such as COVID-19, you know, if the Rona wasn't popping in these streets, would these folks be checking for us and understand that, guess what? Enough is enough. If these businesses weren't closing down, if these entertainers and sports weren't paused or taking a hiatus, if this capitalistic society wasn't slowly but surely unraveling in certain spaces, would this be as much of an issue? So it's like, okay, do you really get it? Do you really see us? Do you really understand? Or is this a response where it's like, let's see if we can get the biggest band-aid we can find, try to close the wound, and hopefully, hopefully they'll feel better and keep it moving. So with all that, I think self-care is really trying to unplug myself from unnecessary things and unnecessary people 
If it's not going to add value to my life, I'm not interested. But I shared at my institution too. I told folks, I was like, listen, I'm going to be prioritizing students and I'm going to be prioritizing my faculty and staff of color. Sorry. That's what I'm going to be doing. Everybody else, to use your words, work it out. Work it out. Because honestly, I am, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And there's times I was writing something down because I was feeling some type of way after I received the correspondence. And you should have saw my you should have saw my first draft. I was feeling some type of way. One of the things I have I had a few things that I had on my mind, some of these things that were laid in my spirit was just because we work at a friend's school doesn't mean we're friends. Mm. Number one. Number two, I was about to hit somebody with the uh, I am not your Negro and you are not my burden. Mm. So that's what I've been feeling. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Like maybe someone came here, you know, they did the men in black joint, psh, <laughs> erase all your privilege and your memory of privilege. And then tried to insert something new and say, Hey, look at all the things that's been happening for years upon years upon years that you weren't privy to for whatever reason, take a look at this. But I'm, 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 I'm cool with that. And I hope that as I've been telling people, keep that same energy yeah. because when the summer passes and the fall comes and then the winter comes and then the spring comes and we're back here next summer, are we still talking about the same things? Cause they're not going away. They're not going away. We've seen it like literally since George Floyd, still people have been gunned down, killed. There's so many things that are still happening because they've been happening for the longest time. So I try to focus on my loved ones. I try to focus on my family. I try to focus on me. I try to watch movies, read books and stuff that's going to, pour into me or give me more clarity about what this moment means and what my role is in this moment. Um, so we can all turn it into a movement and sustain mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. so sometimes my self care is difficult because I realize that my self care is taking care of others. Mm -hmm. And I realize that my self care sometimes is, is being selfless. And sometimes that could be draining, but it's like what we're called to do particularly right now. And I, I, I can't, I can't feel no ways tired, as right. they say, exactly. because exactly. our ancestors, man, woo, woo. Right. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to unplug from things and people that I don't need to be around and fill myself with things that are going to help me gain more clarity, more consciousness, and be able to be of service in mm -hmm. this moment to the movement. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are climbing up on the rough side of the mountain. Mm-hmm. have been for the mm. <laughs> Yeah, so many points that you raised like spark so much in my mind in terms of, you know, it. it I like that notion of, of being clear about who you're going to prioritize. I think that's very important. Um, that's very important. And and, he, I, and I acknowledge the part of you that's like, ooh, you sure? You know, inside of me, because that's training. You know, it's hard to do that. And I've, I've been in a few conversations where I'm like, oh, we don't, we don't, we're not sound about this stuff anymore. So this can't be done. Mm. That's wrong. No. And I guess I've been, I've been thinking, it's, I've been responding to a lot that's going on, having like a lot of internal conversations and saying like, well, how do I, how do I show up in these spaces? How do I, what's my way of involving myself in this dialogue? Um, what are the moments that I get quiet about something? It don't, it demands what I want and need because ain't nobody going to get it. It's just going to be frustrating. It's a waste of my breath and time or I'm trained to not do this or expect this. You know, there is a fear of retaliation, the fear of rejection, because it's real. It's so, so real, so real. You know, not surreal, so real. And just facing those moments is a uh, part of it. Uh, and something else she said, uh, that I'm trying to remember that sparked something in terms of, um, oh, what happens in the fall? Mm -hmm. like, like we, I mean, <clears throat> yes, all these things lined up and some, for some reason it's like magic lightning or magic whatever and it's all lined up. But I'm also sitting here like, why didn't you believe this before when I told you about this, asked you to read this book? This is not like there's anything, new, there's new situations and new murders. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But right now in the moment where we're trying to figure out if a young man was actually lynched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on in America right now. Mm -hmm. The family is like, our child would not hang himself. We didn't mm -hmm. know what's going on. 
you know, like that's, that's where we are. That's huge. That's huge. And, you know, the, this, it's hard to trust because your mind goes to this, this kind of thing. It's like, it probably happened. It yep. probably happened. That's probably exactly what happened, you know, is what you go to because it'll be, it will be consistent. And it's horrifying that that's true. It's absolutely horrifying to the depth of my soul that that is true and that is how, that is what our, how our world is structured and that is who we are. And so I do find myself trying to um, find that balance and also being angry at people. You know, have you seen the New York Times bestseller list? I haven't, no. <laughs> mm. <sighs> white fragility, stand from the beginning, how to set the white kids about race, how to raise white kids, all the books that we've been like, Read this, read that, read this, read that. All of a sudden that we already read. I was like, it's rare that I open a New York Times bestseller list and I've read every single book in wow, the world. Wow, it. wow, wow, wow. You know? Right, right, totally. Mm -hmm. Go take a look at that. That was a, I saw it and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, yeah. And, and the books are selling out. The books are selling out. And it's amazing. And it's like, it, it is such a moment. I have gratitude that people are going there. But I have real... Honest, honest anger that you're just getting this because you're saying that stuff is real. Why didn't you believe me last year, five years ago, 10 years ago, 60 years ago, when the folks were talking about this and saying like, hey, this stuff is unfair and just, and you're killing us. Why wasn't that just accepted immediately? Hmm. Why, why? I'm glad you're here, yay, yay, yay. But what's in your heart, what's in your mind? Why was this not irrelevant and important to you? Mm. Why did it take George Floyd um, as a national symbol mm -hmm. to happen? Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. This stuff, stuff is real. I'm, and it's tough because I'm glad people are stepping up and saying and turn around and saying no more, no more, no more. But the fear and worry of like, as you said, in the summer, like, oh, well, whatever. I had, um, I had this, I saw this great piece on LinkedIn. This one wrote, I uh, should have got her name. And it was um, all about how she's like, all these letters from corporations are good, I guess, but you all don't want black executives. Mm. And it comes down, to, I, I, for me, it's pretty clear. People have to actually change the way they think, behave, perform, function. You know, black, you, I'm sure you know this as a black man of being excluded from places. And it really comes down to like a handful of people like, well, I don't want to deal with you questioning me when I make a mistake or mm -hmm. I do stuff this way. I don't want to do it that way. Mm -hmm. Or I may have to admit and acknowledge that I have real issues and problems. Think about all the mediocre people you saw. Oh my goodness. Not even mediocre. Just right. like, you know how to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. think about the long list of people that you can point to. And it was simply based on race and exclusion. Mm amazing like it's amazing that we have to live with this that we've had to live with this absolutely and you know some stuff that you said while i was while, while, while i was listening some other things started to come up into my mind and finally finally as i told you off camera earlier um i have atoned for my cultural sins and i have watched just mercy <laughs> excellent i have i've watched it um and there was a point in that movie where my wife and I were talking about one particular scene and without giving things away and just talking about a number of stuff, I'll just say, remind me of that conversation of that person who knows that what they're doing is right or what they would do is right, but they're afraid to do it because of the threat to their safety. They're afraid to do it because of the threat to their life and their livelihood or what might happen in terms of retaliation. If you stand up for justice, if you speak out against, anything that happened that should not have happened. So when we think about this situation now, when we think about that self-care question that you asked, how can we encourage people to continue the fight, realizing that sometimes that might come at sacrificing your self-care? And how do we encourage people to realize that this is a time where we're going to be challenged from so many different places? Because while there's a lot of people who want this to happen, there are so many powers that be that don't want it to happen. Exactly. 
Exactly. So how can we make sure we sustain this? How can we make sure that this is not something that's just a blip on the radar and all of a sudden just goes away? How do we make sure that now people starting to barbecue, people on the block, you know, people outside, restaurants are starting to open again. How do we make sure folks don't lose sight of what's happening and why we've been marching in the streets and why there are protests? How do we make sure that happens um, and give people that, that power and encouragement to say, listen, I know it might be a sacrifice. I know you might not be able to practice self-care the way you want to, but ultimately this is what we need to do. How, how, what's that message? How do we get that out there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I I um I have one one word that I use when it comes to this question, and that is that is change with mm. a capital C. Mm. And that's the whole tweet, as the kids would say. <laughs> change. People have to change their mindsets, their behavior, they have to face their fears, they have to research and read and truly understand. All of this is right here in front. It's, it's right, study the history. It's right in front of us. And I don't, I don't want the pop culture solutions. Mm -hmm. I don't want pop culture solutions. I don't want celebrities doing whatever they do. I want individuals and humankind to be like, oh, let me understand why black people are at a lower economic rate or paid a lower economic rate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than poor people. Mm -hmm. Why are black people living in environments that are not supported by or seen or in the, in the ghetto? Why are black people not advancing in their careers? Why are black people hit so heavily and with, with such high numbers with COVID? Mm -hmm. Like just look at just find look at the answer and then think about how to turn it around and change that. And think about how you show up individually. I think people get like systemic racism is a big old monster. I can't do anything about it. It's like kill that noise. That's that's a cop out, that's an excuse. You can definitely do something about it. And that is that is that internal change that that's I think that's the first spot. That's the first place. Because mm -hmm. people do sit and live in that fear and doubt and don't um step up and don't challenge. There's so many, there's so many resources. If you Google what can I do, mm -hmm. you'll get a, a long list of stuff and find one that fits you. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you why how do we how do you sustain this uh move the monumental movement? I think I think you're absolutely right. Um, I think it's um, it's really about that change with the capital C. I also think the same way that folks are flooding the streets to protest, um, we need to flood the polls to vote. We need to flood um, our public hearing boards where we can talk to people in the state legislature. Uh, we need to make sure that we um, flood different social media streets, be out here in these digital streets, actually doing a number of different things. I yeah. think it's really about continuing to raise awareness create that conscious community and keep it on the radar. We can't allow folks to start. That's why it's important for us to own our own media. That's why it's important for us to have our own newspapers, to have our own blogs and think pieces. That's why what we're doing right now is important because we have to keep getting that message out there because it's not the popular one. Sometimes it might come and be a popular one for a moment because everybody wants to look woke or whatever the case may be. Yeah, yeah. They want to be a part of this trendy movement. They want to say they yeah. did something. It's almost like I got the t-shirt from the conference. I'm woke. Exactly. Um, exactly. That's not what we need. Yeah. We need it to be a sustained thing. Um, so I think it's, we really need to continue going. And as I was sharing with my boy Josh, like I mentioned before, we can't get into this habit of being so quick to forgive people. I yeah. think we have to remember that Sometimes we have to have a staunch rejection of anything that's disrespectful and unfair, unjust. Um, and we have to keep going until we get justice on a grand scale. Um, mm -hmm. It's not just about an individual situation. It's about institutional um, pieces that need to be dismantled and destroyed. And until that happens, we can't be satisfied. We can't forgive because folks haven't atoned yet. Mm -hmm. So until folks atone, until folks repent, until folks make it, so that we can all feel like this country is built on the foundation that it said it was built on, then we, we, we can't stop. It's almost, like, it's almost like P. Diddy and Bad Boy. Can't yeah. stop, won't stop. No, no. no. You know? We can't, we can't. But with that being said though, because no. I've seen the game before and I've talked about this before too. We have a lot of folks who try to come in and co-opt the movement. Yet and still though, there's some folks who are a little bit more insidious in that, right? So I'm thinking about, you've been doing this work longer than I have. And you've said this before. You said, listen, I've been laying this stuff down at your feet for years. 
how do we make sure that the spaces that we're in, one, are now affirmed, because I know once things got crazy during COVID and folks started to go back home to go so they can learn at school, I mean, learn um, at home, but do school, right? A lot of the DEI stuff got pushed to the back burner. Oh, yeah. The minute all this stuff started to happen, folks knocking on people's door, flooding their inbox. It's like, we need you. Right. So how do we, one, protect ourselves? Right protect ourselves in terms of self-care and not having compassion fatigue and really knowing how we prioritize who we talk to, what things we do. But how do we make sure that the work we've been doing, we get compensated for it, and the work that is going to come is not taken from us and given to some other folks who've never been down for the culture, never been about the culture, never done anything for the culture. How do we make sure that we protect ourselves and maybe use this as a moment for leverage and let folks know that we've been here and then if there's anything that needs to happen and along these roads, you come through us. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's, um, you hit me. <clears throat> you hit me. Uh, you really got me. Yes, all of that. All of that. I amplify it and celebrate it. But you really hit me with that moment of uh, we can't just forgive right mm. away. Mm. Um, and I've been struggling with that because I have people reaching out to me. And how do I have an honest, deep conversation with them? And mm. be like, you've hurt me in numerous ways and your life is financially more successful than mine is because of your family legacy, mm. because the opportunities you were given that I was denied, because of you having the belief that you deserve it and therefore you pursuing it and me not having that belief. That's been beat into me and trained. Tra I've been trained to behave that way. And really realizing I need to step up and deal with that. And that whole, that whole not forgiving is, uh, that's, a, that's a big one, dude. That's a big one. I'm a little, I'm a little like silenced because I got to digest that one and sit with it because it's, it's huge. Yeah, because I, and I, and I mean, it is huge. And for me, and I've, I've shared this plenty of time before, as a Christian, I believe in forgiveness. No. I believe yeah. in redemption. I really do. But again, in order for us to get that, like we have to bridge that gap from when you did something wrong, you wanna talk about restorative justice? One, that means justice should have been in place to begin with in order for it to be restored. Mm -hmm. But even if there was no justice in place for it to be restored, in order for us to bridge that gap from what you did to me that was unfair, unjust, and disrespectful, to get to justice, you need to show some atonement, you need to show some actionable items, you need to give me some deliverables. I need receipts of the stuff that you've been doing to change your ways. Yeah. So if you hurt me, how are you repairing that harm? Not me. How are you repairing that harm? Mm -hmm. How are you going to tell me that, you know what, I did some damage and here's what I'm doing to rectify the situation. And until we get to that point, when we talk about forgiveness, forgiveness is usually for the person, mm -hmm. not for the person who did the, 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 the situation, it's for mm -hmm. the person who's in the situation, who was the person who was the victim of that situation. So for me, where I'm at, I, I will protect my mind, my heart and my soul and say, you know what? They're not gonna take up rent, um, space in my head rent free. It's not gonna happen. However, what is going to happen though, you throw that to the side, but until you show me that you've actually done the work to atone for what you did, to repent for what you did, I'm keeping my forgiveness. I'm not telling you a thing, but to myself, I'm like, oh, like, like you said, ain't gonna bother me, ain't gonna worry me, right? Ain't gonna worry, ain't gonna worry me. Ain't gonna worry me. Do you, do you tell the person they need to atone or do you just go let them do that? How do you handle that situation? For me, it depends on my relationship with the person. So if it's a, if it's a person who's close to me, I'm like, listen, bro, fam, you done did something. Honestly, to tell you the truth, I love you. But this relationship can't continue the way it was until X, Y, and Z. And then leave it there. If it's a person I don't really have a strong relationship with, I'm not even addressing it. I know in my mind that I'm moving differently until this person moves in the direction that they need to move, then we can revisit this conversation and this relationship about how it's moving forward. Because I think far too often, we are a forgiving people. Oh my goodness, yeah. We are forgiving people. And that's exactly why, I can't remember the author's name, um, but you, you had mentioned her last point when, when she said, folks are lucky that we're looking for equality and not revenge. That's Miss Kimberly Johnson. Thank you. So Miss Kimberly Johnson, so it's like, okay, we are a forgiving people. We're not looking for revenge. If mm -hmm. we were, we would have we got it a long time ago. Yeah. We really would have. So 
the fact that we are so loving so much, so I think to a fault, to a mm -hmm. fault to the point where it's like we might stifle ourselves, mm -hmm. um, at least politically, at mm -hmm. least like here in the world, in the flesh, right in front of our faces. I think sometimes we need to keep that forgiveness for ourselves, forgive ourselves, allow us to like deal with it ourselves. For other folks, nope, you're not, I'm not telling you, I'm not doing it. No, because you need to actually do something to earn that forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I can't just give it to you. Mm -hmm. That moment, you take me back to the moment with um, that kid who went in and shot all those people at the AME church in Toronto. Mm, mm, mm. And like the day after on the court thing, they were like, we forgive you. And I remember being like, am I supposed to like this? Because it doesn't, it really doesn't feel right. And my mind went to all kinds of things like, you're in the South and you're trained. Are you kidding me? Like what? And then a judge was like, we got to pray for this boy's family. And I was like, what? what's yeah, going on? Yeah. This man went in and killed nine people in the church, sat and prayed with them, and then went and shot them all up in the church. And, and this is, a, and, that, and thank you for bringing that up, because it's, I think it's a larger conversation. And, and, and I think it's a conversation that, at least in my spaces, when we talk about Christianity, and they say that's the white man's religion, it's the master slave religion, there's so many things that we have to unpack and talk about. Because yeah. that, like, forgiveness, that's not what forgiveness looked like. No. That was more so political gain. Yeah. And it's like, let's make sure we can stifle a movement because we want you to say, I forgive you on camera. Same right. thing that happened with Amber Geiger. I'm like, okay, if you want to go down there and give her a hug because you're a Christian and you love her, do that off camera. Like there's certain things that, like, there's just certain things that I think that we conflate some spaces without seeing the big picture. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes we, we confuse religious doctrine with the relationship that you have with God or whomever you, you, you look after, look up to, whatever deity. But it's like, we can't sit here as a people and allow certain things to continuously happen to us mm -hmm. and say, I forgive you. Because guess what? We never get the benefit of the doubt. No. We're always guilty to a proven innocent. And yeah. Speak, like, it's, it's hyperbolic what I'm saying, but I'm trying to drive home a point. Like, no, I get it. We, can't give home, we, we can't give up that forgiveness when other folks don't forgive us, let alone give us the benefit of the doubt to begin with. So it, it's, it's, it's tough. It really is tough. But I've had to learn, listen, I just, I just can't do it to protect me, to protect my people, to protect our legacy, our culture, our generation, moving forward, certain things. Sorry, I want you to sit with that because I'm tempted. I'm tempted so many times because I have a good heart just like you do. And it's like, there's plenty of times when someone does wrong to me and I might have to read them real quick, which I do. And then they like, oh, well, I'm sorry, blah, blah. And I'm like, I could easily be like, oh, it's all good. Let's move forward. Nah, some folks need to sit with that. So yeah. I'm going to get a response from me again because I should never have to respond in the first place. Right. This should have never happened. So right. I'm, I'm trying to discern when those moments are versus when it's really a time for forgiveness. And that's, that's, that's been tough. And that's hard. That is so cool. I have two particular cases right now where I'm like, do I say something or do I just say Buddha bless? And, mm -hmm. and these things are like years old and have severe ramifications for me which is enough, severe ramifications mm. in terms of how I move through the world and how I feel about myself and how I interact. And folks are smiling and joking and jiving in my face, you know, and I'm like, you don't know, mm. you don't know. And I, that silence that we have, mm -hmm. we're good, no, mm -hmm. we're good, we're good, no mm -hmm. worries, we're good, we're good. And I'm sitting here crying. Mm. So that's why I'm like, who sent me this? <laughs> who was like talking to me? I opened a little bag and I was like, what? Do, you know, when you open a bag, it's like five of them. Oh, man. Out, you're like, yo. Oh, <laughs> man. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah. So. I hear yeah. that. Yeah. It's a big one. It's huge. Huge. Wow. Uh, you, you schooled me today. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yes, uh-huh, uh-huh, yep, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Listen, I told you. <laughs> I know, right? Amazing. I'm, I, I, it's, I, I usually don't get, like, to me a second. I know, I know. Listen, at first sip, I was like, it's going, uh, we in for it. <laughs> yeah, you're taking, you're taking me somewhere. This, it's, it's, it's good, though. This is, I hope someone hears this and thinks about how they can take care of themselves and do it, because that's not part of the formula to perpetuate 
and feed and fuel systemic racism is us not doing this. Mm. Mm. But it's like, well, you know, life is hard. Mm -hmm. Can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like, and so I suppose like, no, let's go, no, let's go rip that statue down. Mm -hmm. Let's go rip that statue down. We already had, we tried to have a meeting and talk to y'all about it. Oh, bet, cut the head off, throw it in the river. Yes. Love that. Every time I hear one, I'm like, yes, the Native Americans are tearing. I, but it's funny thing. It, I saw what was happening with the Confederate statues and the, the former enslavers statues. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. And then I saw, um, I saw a meme and it was like, Christopher Columbus is watching, there's a, there's a, a Christopher, Columbus, Christopher Columbus like statue looking at the uh, folks tearing Confederate statues down like, <laughs> and screwing up the next day, it was like Native Americans in Minneapolis went to the state capitol and tore the statue down. About time. You yeah, yeah, yeah. We are, we are having a revolution I never, I never imagined we'd see. My goodness. Talk never imagined we'd see. And it is, it is beautiful and fantastic and necessary and gives me so much hope. Gives me so much hope. Um, I was thinking about this, you know, because we're talking about the Confederacy. Mm -hmm. um, that was only five years mm. of the Confederacy. This was not some like hundred years of legacy and history. That was a rebel group that w rose up for five years and lost. But they built a lost cause after that yeah. and claimed it. Put those statues up, changed education. We ain't gonna talk about slavery. They, they, they lost, they won in that sense. They lost the war, but they won the lost cause. And the lost yeah. cause, in case anybody doesn't know, was an entire movement set up by the Confederates, led by the daughters of the Confederacy, to say, we need to honor the fallen from our war of Northern aggression, which is what the Civil War is referred to by some people. I've heard people actually say that. Mm, mm, um, mm. mean it right mm. we need to redefine and retell this story and they did it they were successful the launch of the kkk becoming this huge rise uprising like think about that think about that we again it's real man right 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 we are we are we are in some moments mo and nascar is like well no more no more confederate flags right I still don't want to go to NASCAR event. I still don't want to go. Yeah, right. I, go, and I, feel, like, I feel like I got nothing there. <laughs> Ain't nothing there for me. Ain't nothing in there for me. You know? All right. So, wow. Um, yeah. My goodness. Interesting. Interesting. Well, we're definitely, definitely in some crazy times. Oh, we sure are. In some crazy times. And regardless of the time we're in, the thing that usually helps, at least for me, particularly today in our conversation. A little brown juice. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, Russell. Hey, hey, hey. A little brown juice, a little brown juice, you know, just a little brown juice. You got a, you got a final toast you want to do, brother? Um, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, pour a little bit up. I don't have the name of the young woman, but I think you'll know it when I, when I see, when I state her, uh, what is now her epithet. You about to lose your damn job. You about to, you about to, you about to, you, get, get this dance. You about to lose your job. You about to that lose your job. That was beautiful. You about to lose your job. <laughs> the first time I saw it, I was like, oh man, what is this? And then I watched and I was like, yo, she's right. Is it really worth you losing your job, man? And the guy is like turning and like trying not to laugh. <laughs> big old gun. And she's just like, you about to, she going into it. She's like, so it was so beautiful. Is she knows she's right. Yep. yep. She knows she's right. And I have so much respect for her for taking that stance. And that, and then also the love for what our people done with it. Have you seen the extended videos of it? Yes. yes. <laughs> Listen, that as well as the hip hop Harry, me, oh. the things that have been going around about the protests, who's next? And all the other people getting fired from their job, who's next? Like those things have been giving me life. They're brilliant. They are brilliant. They feed my soul. <laughs> so for all those people that are all the making memes and stories and rebelling and all the ways, we stand with you. We yes. salute you. We celebrate you. 
We will re re resist with you. Yes. Ditto what you said. Hey. Mm. Okay, Russell's. Yeah, brown juice barbershop, baby. Listen, brown juice barbershop dropping hits. Dropping Completely. hits. Completely. Well, till next time, stay safe. Stay we have to the exit. <laughs> There goes the safety right there. Stay safe, stay woke, stay smiling. All right, bro. Peace.